And that was a very special interview with KJ52, a famous Christian rap artist who's going to be performing at the Revolve Conference for Teen Girls on Saturday, March 2nd at First Cathedral in Bloomfield. And here's his special chat with our midday host, Dave Reno. Well, we're talking with Christian rapper and hip-hop artist KJ52. And uh, thanks for spending time with us uh, today here on WSDK. Thanks you, for having me. You just released your uh, eighth album. You've been at this for quite a long time. How did you get started? <laughs> uh, I mean, I started writing rap probably when I was a teenager. Um, it wasn't until I came to Christ around 15. Uh, and then uh, breaking my nose pole vaulting my senior year of high school, I had a board of writing this, you know, very different, purposeful, you know, vibe. Uh, that's when I kind of get started. I didn't really think I was going to end up doing anything with it. I think it was just more like a hobby. Um, but, you know, God has a way of sneaking up on you when it comes to things like that. And a few years later, I made a demo. A couple years later after that, I ended up getting a record deal. And uh, 13 years later, I've been, uh, I've been doing it full-time ever since. Oh, great. Yeah. Sometimes you start out with things as a hobby, and it's really God steering you in a direction. I think a lot of us in radio started out that way. Um, Absolutely. But- um, so, I need to know, what is the meaning of your name, KJ52? The KJ part is uh, its just an abbreviation of an old name I used to go by, which I think about a year in, I thought this was the worst name idea ever. Uh, so, I abbreviated it. 52, um, at the time, really just was just a number. I, I don't think it had much meaning, but it wasn't over time. Uh, I started to look at a scripture where Jesus took five loaves and two fish and multiplied it. I thought, you know what, what a, what a good picture of where we need to be. Uh, in a state of being broken, and also the fact that God will take the little that we give Him, and when we don't feel like we have much to offer, He'll take it and multiply it. And uh, I wanted to do something that would always keep me conscious of that, so I knew that just always referring back to that verse kept me in a state of humility, hopefully. Um, so, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a good meaning. Yeah, I like that. You, you've gotten a chance to uh, tour around, I guess, quite a lot. What are some of your favorite places uh, that performing has allowed to, you to travel to? You know, I don't know if I necessarily have a favorite place um, because I think I find certain things that I like about every area. I mean, obviously, I'm Floridian, so there's something about being in my hometown or my hometown area mm-hmm. that uh, rings true. But, uh, you know, I just recently came back from Canada, and in spite of the fact it was zero degrees, um, there was just something about the Canadian people themselves that always make it a great show. But, like anything, you know, little as much of God is in it. So, I don't necessarily know if I have a favorite place. I think my favorite place is the place where I'm at. Right. At that point in time. Yeah, that's a good philosophy. Uh, what what part of Florida are you from? Uh, well, I was born in Miami, but originally grew up in the area of the uh, Tampa Bay area. Uh, I now live in Southwest Florida. I've lived down here around 16. I've uh, been here since. I live in Cape Coral, which is uh, right next to Fort Myers. I'm familiar with that. Oh, that's where the uh, Red Sox have their spring training. You're lucky. There you go. <laughs> yep. We've been camped out every year. All, all the... All the uh, all the boss tonight. Your new album is called Dangerous. Uh, what's the meaning of that name? What do you, what do you mean by living dangerously? Uh, it's just mainly twofold. It's the fact that you know we're called to get out of our comfort zone, but at the same time we're also called to uh, you know to avoid those things that are dangerous, the things that get in the way or hinder or slow us down. And um, I think it's all in how you look at it. I think uh, you know we are uh, creatures of habit, so sometimes those habits are bad. Got the government over there for a reason. Uh, but the same token, you know, when she called uh, Peter out of the boat, you know, it was a dangerous thing to do. But the picture of it is the fact that he was he was the closest to Christ at that point. So it's all on how our perspective is on it. Yeah, you know, Jesus didn't call us to take the safe road all the time, but uh, we can tr- right. trust him that he's leading us in the right way. Um, now you're you're involved in the Revolve tour this year, which is that's part of the Women of Faith ministry. How did you get involved in that ministry? I think I started with them back in 05, maybe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 05, 06. Um, I think originally it was just that they were in their infancy stages, like the second year, and the number one thing the girls had been asking for was more guy groups. So I was their guinea pig, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, but I think they saw that, you know, obviously hip hop translates well all across the map. It's not just niche music, it's, it's mainstream culture now. So I think that made sense. But I think the same token, I have, you know, a youth pastor background. Uh, my passion is speaking to students, and uh, I think they needed a guy's perspective in that aspect also. You know, guys speaking to young girls' lives, which is important, or releasing examples. So off and on over the years, you know, um, when it was the right time, I would uh, back with them. I think this might be my fourth year, I think, since they started. 
Um, and then this is like the first year of actually being for more of a speaker slash artist. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a cool spot to be in. Yeah, that's a, a great uh, opportunity, great ministry to, I'm sure they really enjoy your music too. Yeah. Um, now, the Revolve Tour is coming here to the Hartford area. It, it's at the First Cathedral in Bloomfield. And by the way, that's a really beautiful venue. Uh, it's huge. It has great acoustics. I think you'll uh, enjoy that. I don't know if you've been there before. Um, but uh, for teen girls who are thinking about being there, what can they expect at the Revolve Tour if they've never been before? Well, I think the main thing they can expect is um, not feeling like they're alone. I think there is power in numbers. So I think sometimes the girls need to see that, you know what I mean, that uh, they might feel isolated at their school or at their house and their family, and, um, you know, and then there's things that are speaking right to their situation. Um, I'm giving a talk on uh, not hiding. Uh, there's multiple other, you know, things, and in fact, even the theme, it's like, this is love. I think sometimes we need to redefine what that is, because obviously it's always being redefined in our society, but redefine it the way God defines it, and uh, I think in those contexts, I think... Uh, you know, they'll find that we're just going to have an amazing time. Um, another addition this year is my DJ is actually spinning the whole time. So, oh, wow. it's going to be a nonstop party. There's no question. <laughs> oh, that's going to be great. It's like an all-day event, right? Yes. And uh, this is on Saturday, March 2nd, so it's coming up soon. Do you know where people can find more information? Just RevolveTour.com. Okay, yeah, RevolveTour.com. And I think it'll be just uh, really a life-changing uh, event for young girls. And I think they should really consider uh, making it a day of it that day. Absolutely. We appreciate you spending some time with us this morning, KJ52. And people can find more information about your music at uh, your website. KJ52.com. All right, great. KJ52, thanks for spending some time with us today here on WSDK. All right, thank you, guys.